You, can well, you want first. to start first? You go, you go first. <laughs> To me, I think story had to be genuine, honest. And, that, that's my, I guess and if you had the intention to make that honest story, um, it would slowly find your audience. So for me, I think it comes from like, you know, uh, also with a voice, like uh, something you want to say. This is something that I've always said, that when you walk away from a movie or, or a short film, and then people start breaking it down and say, oh, you know what, guys, the music was so good in it. Or, oh, the cinematography was great. I love the editing. I think you've lost the story, actually. Sometimes when you walk away from um, after watching a film and then you don't even know what to say. You're just like, wow, that was a good story. That's a good story, I think. You have any ideas? Oh? There's one thing that I am pretty particular about when it comes to a lot of my shoots. I don't like to get um, caught up in the trends of the time just because it's cool. Or I don't like to do this and that just because, oh, that's what everyone's doing. Um, and that's kind of what I mean by being honest to the story. So if the story doesn't call for it, we're not going to do it. Just because um, everybody is shooting with uh, RGB lights and everything is pink and blue doesn't mean that we're going to have pink yeah, and blue yeah, light yeah, in yeah. our film. Yeah. You know, it's not appropriate, so that's why we're not going to do it. You know? And there's nothing wrong, I think, with traditional storytelling. It's just like if I have a date with a girl and then just you know, the person dressed really like pretty and all that. I want to know the character, the mm. person, more than just like, okay, very nice accessories very nice fashion sense and all that. Mm. So this is how I, I see works. When I see that person, I want to see the, the real person rather than, okay, someone putting something to make the person look nice in front of you. I think whether if it's, a, if it's like a commercial project or my own independent project, is to get very familiar with the subject and also like the people that I'm, f I'm filming. Usually I'll just make sure like uh, if it's like a new environment, I'll go to that place a few times and just make sure I'm very familiar with the place to feel comfortable. And also like the people that I'm meeting, I'm shooting, I, I don't shoot them on the day that I'm shooting. It all depends on how free or maybe how, how much time they can give me. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to spend time talking to them, getting to know them, basically to capture you like the way you are and also to make you feel comfortable and also have the trust. I don't like the camera uh, or the lighting or everything that falls under my department to seem that it's there. I don't want to interfere with the story. So in this, in this short film that we, we did, right, one of the things that we wanted to do was to keep the camera very um, observational. In, in those moments, we don't track into the face of the person or we don't, um, we don't even pan with the person that walks away. We let them walk out of frame. We let them walk into frame. Um, we let them take their time with the, with the scene. We don't uh, cut just because we're thinking of the duration. We're very much flying the wall. So this kind of natural, um, almost documentary like cinematography, I think is something that I bring to most of my jobs. I'm interested in social commentary. So for example, if there's certain things that um, if the media is being biased, then I think I can, I can provide that alternative voice. Uh, it shouldn't be just one voice, right? I think a society is sick if it's, we have only one single voice. So I, I, I'm, I was a science student. I believe in Newton's third law. So when there is an action, there bound to be a reaction. So it shouldn't be just one way. So recently I read something. So it goes like this, uh, wrong. 无力者有力, 
让悲观者前进 ，right? So inaction is to like let the weak, um, let 无力者有力 give strength to the weak, right? 让悲观者前进 so is basically let the people who are spilling down, and then you lift them up, and then to move forward. So I think, I think like maybe in action, I think like uh, as filmmaker, we have the privilege to do that. I think then we should do it. Sometimes there's going to be disagreements, um, but and it's okay to have disagreements. But, but that's okay. Like, yeah. I think it's um, it's healthy to have some disagreement if it's constantly agreeing, or if it, it'd be horrible for Vpin if he had a yes man as a DP who just does everything that you want to do. You know what I mean? Like it's I think it's healthy to have some kind of um, uh, disagreement here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for me, I think to find people who are serious about the project or the job. And you can tell, I got Ken on board. Is that I always remember? Like, I think was one or two occasion when uh, was doing a separate job altogether. It was a commercial job, and you can see how serious he is. And then trying to maybe also trying to improve himself. I think this is what I look for. I think certain quality. I look for like uh, people in my team. I actually never show my wife anything that I shoot. I think it's been about uh, close to 20 years since she's seen, oh, less than that, maybe about 15 years since, just because, right, um, I don't know if I can handle my loved one telling me it sucks. So it's a, it's a fear that I have, right, that it's, uh, I, so what I do, right, I kind of keep to myself. But at the same time, um, if, I, if I shoot something and I know it's, in good right then I'll show it but if but most of the things that we shoot is just okay right I keep that to myself because I, I have this fear right that um, there's there's only a few people in in the world right whose opinion matters and it's your loved one everybody else doesn't matter if they hate it who cares but if my wife tells me it sucks oh my god I don't know if I can live through that so there's one night um, um, when I was talking to my wife after completing the first feature film, and I and I say that, um, oh, okay, and I say this, I say like, sorry, I don't have money. You know? But she say that uh, I say you know a lot of times we, <coughs> oh yeah, let me control, let me. Yeah. Can you just carry on when I'm not the? Uh, can you just carry on and then just? Uh, no, but I okay. I want to hear what okay, you okay. say as well. Yeah. So, <coughs> so a lot of times we take bus and all that. So I just say that, um, too bad I don't have a car. Then she said that, uh, that many people, in, you know, if, you, if you look around, there's so many with cars, but not many people have films. So it's okay. Yeah, so I just want to say like, it's a special profession. And then if you, it's how you make use of it. I mean, this is my personal experience. Like, you know, like sometimes I find, I find like, hey, I wish I could have this and that. Maybe I don't provide so much for the family, yeah. And it's not just about going that red race, chasing something, because like no matter what, how rich you are, there'll be people richer than you, right?